This is YSM Sports Media. I want to thank you for all your love and support. Really appreciate it. We wouldn't be able to do this without you. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button right now and click the notification button for all future content. One here with Donald No Love Smith. What's good? Yo? What's going on, man? What's going on? How you feeling? I'm all right, man. How are you? I'm great, man. I'm feeling good. You know, it's a Sunday laid back chill day. All right. You 10 and 0, six knockouts. Why are you having trouble getting the bigger name fights that you want? Um, it's simple, man. You know, I'm six foot tall. I'm a southpaw. I can punch. I'm slick. I got defense. So a lot of these guys want to protect their records. You know what I'm saying? They know, you know, that if they get in the ring with me, it's a potential loss. You know, and nobody want to put no blemishes on their record. Everybody want to be pretty boy. So every, every fight, somebody say, well, he punched too hard or he's too tall, he's too big. But it, it, that's that's just simple. Like, when you watch my fights, you can see why a lot, a lot of these guys don't want to fight me. You know what I'm saying? They don't want to put their they, they record at risk. Hey, yo, you six foot 126? Yeah. Yo, how you make that weight? I make it easy, man. I don't ever get too big. You know what I'm saying? I walk around. Like, no bigger than probably, like, 138, 139. So, I only got to lose a few pounds, you know what I'm saying, when, when, when it's fight time. And I'm always, you know, ready, staying in shape, you know. So, it's never too hard. I be thinking about going down to 122 sometimes. Really? I feel, I be feeling crazy strong at 120. At my weigh-ins, I be weighing 125, 124 and a half. And that's just with a regular strength and conditioning. And training for my fight. If I really do like a super crazy intense eight week training camp, I can make one twenty two like it's nothing. What was the last fight that you had? My last fight that I had was um I was like which weight was that? No, no. Like when was it? Oh, it was um it was August uh twenty nineteen. Uh, that was a that was a top rank card, right? Yeah, yeah. Now, do you have a promoter or are you free agent? No, nah, I'm, I'm a free agent. Okay. Do you feel like that also attributes to you getting the fights that you want? Not not having a big backing? Um, Yeah, because, you know, like a lot of guys, too, they be trying to price themselves out of range, you know what I'm saying, out of fight. They'll say a number that they know they're not going to get just so you know what I'm saying it won't look bad on them like oh well, we ain't like we didn't take the fight we off we we asked for money that they ain't want to give but they're asking for way too much money money that they they know they wouldn't get nowhere else so it's like having a promoter a good promoter will, will wouldn't care because they'll they'll see the bigger picture and be like well listen we see the bigger picture so we're gonna pay whatever you know whatever it takes you know what I'm saying to make you a world champion if it's, if you gotta fight this guy that guy and not having a promoter sometimes it does take a little take a little time and it, it do be a little headache because a lot of guys be pricing themselves out. You would think that somebody out there would want your O. That's what I'm saying. I'm calling these guys out and it's like, take my O. I'm putting it out there. My O is on the table for anybody, man. It's letting people know. My O is on the table. If you feel like you can take my O, then, you know, I never turn the contract down. You know, the, I, don't, I don't get into that. You know what I'm saying? I feel like we boxing and we all in this sport to be good, to be great. You know what I'm saying? So I put my own line against anybody, top, low, whoever feels as though they want to take it, you know. I saw a live where you were arguing with, uh, I think it was Devin Haney's fighter. Mm -hmm. What's his name? Da uh, uh, Darren Cunningham. Darren Cunningham, right? Yeah. What happened with that situation? Um, You know, uh, my team offered them, you know, a fight, and they said that uh, they, didn't want, they didn't want to take the fight. You know, so I uh, I reached out to them and like, why you didn't want to take the fight? Like, I'm undefeated. You undefeated. You're 11 and no. I'm 10 and no. You know, this would be a good fight. You know, for the for the fans. You know, for the people. And it'd be a good fight for us. You know, to 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 see who's really at that next level. To really see, you know, who's who. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to be one of them guys that's 30 and 0 and never fought nobody. You know what I'm saying? So I reached out to them and like, dang, take the fight. And you know, I spoke to Devin Haney as well, and they was like, well. We're not going to take that fight. You, that fight is just not going to happen. It don't make sense. But normally when people say something don't make sense, it means on that, their end, they already may think, oh, yeah, we're going to lose. On my end, I already know I'm going to win. I will put that, that guy out. He's too small. 
and they were just saying it's not going to happen. There's no way it's going to happen. It's not happening at all. So that was that. You feel like Cunningham's ducking you? Of course. He has every right to. You know, I don't look at these guys. I used to look at them like, oh, they chickens and they this, they that. But, man, when I look at my upsides, it's like I'm the height of a middleweight. And I'm punching like a middleweight, too, for the guys that actually felt my power in the ring, sparring or or a fight. So it was like, you know, I, I understand where they're coming from, but I don't. Because I'm in this sport to be great. That I'm the best. And the only way I can do that is fighting the best. I can't say I'm the best if I'm not fighting nobody. That don't make sense. I'm on the same level as the guys that I'm beating up. If they let, they low class, and I'm low class. You know what I'm saying? There's nothing to prove with them. All right. So, speaking of, you know, low class, high class, mm -hmm. is there anybody that you want to get in the ring with? Besides Darren Cunningham, is there anybody that you just got your eye on? There's a lot of people I want. I got my eye on. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people, you know, that's high class that I got my eyes on that I, I know I cook. I know I beat up real, real bad. You know, I got my eyes on, like, I I, I, I will cook Gary Russell. He called him 147s out, and he, he don't want to fight Devin Haney. I'm 126. You 126. I got an O. Take my O. You, he fighting all, all bums anyway. <laughs> you fighting all bums anyway? You, like he got a he lost to Lumachenko and he beat Jojo Diaz. He got one good, real good win on his record. So it's like, okay, fight me. You fighting you fighting bums? You might as well take my O. If you gonna be fighting guys that's twenty something and twelve and twenty something and five and you supposed to be a world champion, Tyler McQuarrie. I will cook him real bad. I will I will stop him. Uh, Carl Frampton. He's too small. He's a midget. I will walk right to him and punch him out the ring. Josh Warrington. I want all the top guys for real. Anybody that's above that I feel as though is, is is a couple levels above me, not because the way they fight, but just, you know, they've been in the game a little longer. I want all them guys. You know what I'm saying? I want every last one of them. And it should be no excuse because they all fighting uh, miscellaneans or, or or lower class level guys, but the same thing is going what they're going to say. Oh, it's, not, it's no risk, no reward for this fight, or they don't want to fight me, or he's too – immature right now you don't have enough fights they all gonna give you a whole bunch of excuses to not fight me you know what i'm saying they're not gonna say oh he's too tall and he punched and he's too slick and that be that they ain't gonna give you that you know what i'm saying they're not gonna give you that part of the box and they think it's gonna be oh he don't have enough fights and he didn't prove himself yet that's exactly why i'm trying to fight charles so i can prove myself because i know i can beat these guys 100 percent sure i can beat these guys frampton i will stop frampton real bad viciously i seen him when he fought tyler mcquarrie tyler mcquarrie just can't take a punch and he, he don't he he not smart enough to to beat a guy like Frampton and you know Frampton took advantage of that. I'm not that guy. I will punch a hole through Frampton and Warrington. Warrington can't punch, can't crack an egg. <laughs> I, I really don't take nobody in the 126 division seriously. Like I train as I'm taking them seriously, but I don't look at them as no threat. I can't take guys that's five four, five five, five six as no threat at all. Like it's just I will walk right to them and punch them out the ring. It's like it's simple. You feel me? Speaking of, uh, you mentioned Gary Russell, right? Mm -hmm. Do you feel like Gary Russell is serious in to jumping up two weight classes or four weight classes? Man, these guys just saying this stuff, you know what I'm saying? He's not jumping up the four weight class to fight uh, Terrence Carver. He's not jumping up two weight class to fight Devin Haney. If he do jump up two weight classes to fight anybody at 135, it's going to be miscellaneous. Like, he might fight a Pedraza or – uh, Javier Fortuna, he might fight one of them guys. He's not going to fight one of like the stamp main guys like a Devin Haney, a Tiafimo, a Lumachenko. He's not going to fight them type of guys. He's going to fight, you know, the 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 the, the beef, the B-level fighters. He's not going to fight the grade A guys. So he's just talking. Because if he was, if he, if he was going to fight, Devin Haney just offered him $1.5 million. So if he was going to fight, he would have took that fight. Like, you know, he, he complacent with just fighting, you know, the mediocre guys, but he trying to keep his name alive, so he calling out guys that he know he's not going to fight. You know, it's typical boxing, you know what I'm saying? Do you think he would take the fight with you? Because he just fought King Tug, and King Tug was 12-0. I, I, honestly, I, I, I will hope he would. If you fighting guys that are 12-0, and you got a guy that's 10-0 who's tired of fighting these mediocre bums that ain't, I don't got nothing to prove to fight, and I want to fight, I want to fight you. I want to fight Gary Russell. I will cook Gary Russell. He's too small. What, he's like 5'4"? I don't care about none of that hand speed, none of that. We can meet wherever he want to meet at. We can meet at 26, 30, however you want to do it, man. I just, I just want to fight the best 
to prove I'm the best. You know what I'm saying? I, I, that's all. I don't think he, I, I know in my mind he can't beat me. I, I, I can't lose to somebody that I got six to seven inches. It's not all about height. It's about the mindset. My mindset tells me that he can't do nothing with me. Like nothing about him can do nothing with me. His arm's too short. I can walk to him. I can outbox him. I can give him any flavor he wants. So I like the confidence, man. It really, it's not really confidence. It's just I'm sure of myself. Like it's not about being confident. It's about me. I know what I can do, and I'm really sure of myself. And you know, I feel as though for me to be 100 percent sure of myself, I have to fight these guys. And I'm calling these guys out because I want to fight. If you're gonna give a guy a 12 and no a chance, if you're gonna give a guy that's 20 something and, and 12 a chance, a guy that's 20 something and five a chance, why not give me a chance? Why not fight me? I really know that I can beat you, and I really like. I, I really want to show you that. No matter if it's Gary Russell, if it's Josh Warrington, Carl Frampton, any of them guys, I, I, I'm on that same level. I'm on that same level. You know what I'm saying? Y'all, you're not doing nothing different from me. You just in, you just turned pro before me. That's all. So you had a, a, a different level to me because you was pro you was pro first. If we turned pro at the same time, I probably would have been stopped you already. I would have been a champion already. You know what I'm saying? So my road is just a little hard because of my upside. Do you feel any pressure to move up and wait because you can't get fights at 126? Um, I had conversations, you know, with my team and stuff like that. We had we had conversations speaking on about that, but I want to be a champion at 26, the weight class that I started. I'll take one at 22. If somebody said right now you could fight for a vacant whatever at 22, I will go to 22 and take it. I can fight at 30, but so it's like I got I I got. I got different flavors. Like I can bounce from 22, 26, 30. I can do that. So it's like, of course I talked about it because it do get hard. It'd be like, dang, man, I can't get no fights at 20. I've been trying to get a fight at 26 for a year. Everybody say the same thing. He's too big or he's punching or it's too much of a risk or they try to outprice themselves. You know what I'm saying? So it just be hard. So I do think about moving up sometimes, but, you know, after talks and talks and talks, you know, like my team and stuff like that, it's just we're not going nowhere. I'm not going to let these guys not because they got to fight me. You know what I'm saying? It's the same. Spence went through the same thing. He had to keep fighting these mediocre guys, keep fighting these half-ass guys because the top dogs didn't want to fight him. And like he said, y'all gonna y'all gonna be on the other side one day. One day y'all gonna be begging to fight me. So you know, I'm I'm not really super crazy in a rush. Of course, I want to get back in the ring because it's been a little while, but it's not gonna take nothing from my game. I'm still in shape. I still feel good. I still look good. So it's just a matter of time. You know, I'm I'm not rushing it. This is boxing. You know what I'm saying? You can't rush it. That's the last thing you want to do. You just got to be patient. Somebody will take a fight. Now, speaking of your last fight, um, you injured your hand, right? Yeah, I broke my hand in the first round. And you and you still – would you, you you broke it when you dropped the guy in the first? Yeah, the first the first 20 seconds of the fight. The first – when I hit him with the, uh, the, the, uh, the hook, the left hook, I broke my hand, came back in the corner, told my coaches, and, you know, we just – Put a game plan together, you know, just to stick and move, keep him on the outside, you know, just box him. All right, so you haven't been in the ring for at least a year, right? Yeah. How's your body feeling? You coming off the injury? Uh, my body feel good. My hand feel great, man. Everything feels good. You know, there's nothing I can complain about. I'm not going to get in the ring and say, oh, it was because I'm coming off an injury. My hand, none of that. You know what I'm saying? I'm a real dog. Like, I'm a real life dog. My hand feel cool. I'm cool. My, I injured my hand a whole year ago. You know what I'm saying? I had enough time. To, I ain't been fighting, so I had enough time for it to heal, be back in place. It actually feel like it got, it got harder. It actually feel like it, it got harder. So, you know, I'm just I'm just waiting, man. I don't feel like I like I'm, I left. I, I, I missed a step. I don't feel none of that. I, I still feel like I just fought. So, it's, it's it's not really a big a big thing to me. I feel good. Okay. Uh, how did the um, COVID nineteen suspension of boxing? affect your plans oh man um it affected it you know a lot the simple fact that you know i had plans this year as being a real like a uh, top contender you know like fighting for something uh, a belt that towards like the end of this year that was like my thing because i know at 26 i don't need 30 fights to fight for a belt you know what i'm saying i don't need a million fights it's all about fighting the right people so i was you know i had my, my taste buds on fighting the right people and put myself in position because, you know, I, as now I see at 26, a lot of belts is being vacant. You know what I'm saying? And whether it's a vacant title, whether I got to take somebody's title, whatever it is, I just want to be in position to to, to to get myself in that in that, in that position to fight for them belts, whether it's vacant or or, or I got to take it from somebody. So it definitely slowed me down because, 
you know, even a local fights is not happening. So it's like you either on TV fighting for big undercard or you're just not fighting. So it's a, it's a little, it was a, it definitely a little rough, but hey, you know, it's life. You can't do nothing about it.